we're here on a court order of service case. This is a compliance hearing. All right, we'll take announcements. Thank you, Your Honor. I, Todd Alvey on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I'm present, ready to proceed, Your Honor. Uh, Elaine Lucero, who is the FBS caseworker in this case, is here to give us an update. Joel Jackson on behalf of the father, Michael Robinson, I'm present and ready, Your Honor. Stacey Zabala on behalf of the county. Ms. Robinson, um, Ms. Ratliff um, is involved in another court right now. She did indicate that that uh, she uh, wanted to have contact with you, so would you please contact her after today's hearing? Mr. Abbey, uh, what do we have new since the court report was filed? I will rely on Ms. Lucero to answer that question if it please court. So the family has been um, working with uh, St. Francis through their that TFF program. Um, they've been meeting with them twice a week. From my understanding that they've been having some successes with that program. They um, have found certain um, techniques and tools that have worked with Kyra. Um, they've had they have had some issues with Kyra um, since the last hearing behavioral issues, some of them, you know, some teenage behaviors, piercing her nose, things like that. Um, but they did have an incident uh, where they had to call law enforcement um, and have Kyra um, escorted to the path to the um, behavioral health unit. Um, she was there for a few days, but we had spoken with them prior to this and they had a previous incident with her a few weeks before as well. And um, so we did inform them if she became a danger to herself or others, um, for them to call and, and that's what they did. They followed through as it was as was asked of them. Um, they have continued to ensure that she's seeing her counselor through um, the Jennings group. Um, she was in equine therapy. She completed three sessions of that and and then Kyra didn't like it anymore. And so, but she has continued with Deborah. Um, Deborah has said she has seen some significant improvement with Kyra. Um Kyra's um attitude about the home has changed. Um, she does report that she feels like she's more heard by both mom and dad. Um, so they're working on that. Um, both parents have started counseling as well. Michael had his first session yesterday with the Jennings group and Grace had her first session on the 21st of September. Um, and so that that's pretty fresh, but they are, but the counselor does report that they have told her that they feel like the Texas Family First program is working for them. Um, let me see. Kyra is still seeing Dr. Mendoza. Um, I did want to add that when I spoke with Grace, um, prior to the incident of her going to the behavioral health unit, um, there was some concerns that her medication may have been part of the factor of, um, what she was dealing with at the time they had, um, given her a little bit of a higher dosage and Kyra had reported to me that she was feeling like angry and she didn't understand why. And so Grace had let me know that she was going to speak with Dr. Mendoza about it and see if they just needed a little bit more time for her, for that medication to, you know, for her to get used to it or if they needed to change it. And so, um, I mean, as far as the family, they, they are following through with everything we've asked. I've given Grace also um, a link for a support group through TPC for um, parents who um, are working with children with mental health issues. And so um, the last time I seen her, I gave her that and she said that she would be, a, she would attend that. I think it's like a once a week group. And so it's kind of where we're at right now. All right. All right. Uh, well, hopefully we're making some progress. Um, Ms. Robinson, since Ms. Ratliff's not with us, is there anything you wanted to address today? Not that I'm aware of. I can't think of anything like you said, she's on some new medication. Um, yes, she still does push authority, but she, uh, I don't believe, I don't recall that she has yelled at us since she's been back from the pavilion. She might have raised her voice. Um, so that, that's a big deal. You know, that really is a big deal. They changed to one of her medications, Abilify, it's an antipsychotic medication to Latuda. And uh, she still takes it at the same time in the evening. So, um, yes, she's still pushing back. But when we, we do the exact same things we've always done with consistent, you know, oh, no one's doing that tonight. We're staying home tonight, you know, that kind of thing. She is, 
accepting the answer after pushing for a little bit and then finally just going back in the house or whatever, instead of causing a blowout because she's so determined to get her own way. So, uh, so we, we count that even though others may think it's a small thing, that's a very big deal to us because that's what's allowing our home to be peaceful. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm very pleased to hear that. So we'll yeah. just keep channeling and channeling and channeling. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jackson, you and Mr. Robinson? You're muted. Mr. Jackson is muted. Thank you. Mr. Searle, my understanding is uh, that Michael kind of got a slow start on, on the council on account that there was a conflict, I believe, with the first counselor. Is that right? No, just scheduling with him. And so, okay. yeah, yeah. Scheduling conflict. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to be clear. I had a uh, chance to speak with both parents earlier this morning. And it's my understanding that, that they're to attend counseling and that they're also to take a parenting class. Is that correct? Um, so the parenting, we've, we've kind of allowed for that to be addressed through the through the Texas Family First program. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, we're 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 working through that and seeing like what kind of techniques that they can that they can utilize like through that program. And then as and then as far as the counseling with them just starting, if there's any parenting um concerns, then we then I'll follow up with that counselor and see if she could address anything. Um because I know that they've met with these counselors in the past since they are someone Kyra has been seeing since the beginning of 2022. And so they're they're kind of aware of the family dynamics. And so I figured working with the therapist and working with with Texas family, with the FIS worker through TFF, you know, we could address those things. Okay. And then it's my understanding the only other uh, things that were required of the parents is uh, uh, to comply with any amended services that would be requested and, and to comply with services that are requested for the child. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's correct. That's the entirety of everything that they're supposed to participate in. Yes, that's correct. Okay. I don't have any further questions, John. Okay. And Mr. Robinson, anything you want to share with us today? I don't have anything further either. Hmm. Okay. All right, sir. <clears throat> okay. And Ms. Zavala. I got to meet with Kyra this weekend, um, and she reports that after that med change, things have been much better. Um, she was saying that the, the meds were making her angry um, and that she felt like this had, had helped. Um, so from her perspective, they're been positive changes. So I'm, I'm hopeful that that hospitalization is a, you know, is in the past. And now that that med issue is, um, is, is addressed, but, um, I'm, I'm hopeful. And, and she seems positive about where, where the family dynamic is going. All right. Well, I would say that on the whole, that's all good news. And, and so, like I said, we just keep channeling and keep working at it. And, um, uh, I'd like to have another review hearing with this. Um, let's meet again on December 19th, 19th. Uh, 2023. And that'll be a nine o'clock docket. Uh, we'll see how things are going at that point. You know, be my sincere hope at that point in time, you know, maybe we'd be ready to, to get out and family will have tools and resources that they need. And, and so, you know, we're, we're here to help. So whatever we need to do, you know, at that point in time, we'll evaluate whether you, whether you all still need us involved or whether you're ready to go it on your own. Okay. Uh, so until then, I will just continue uh, all of the services offered through TFF. And uh, uh, we are also live streaming. I'll see you all back. And, and in uh, December. Ms. Taylor is making our record. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Todd Alvey on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I'm present and ready to proceed, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Shea Grant is St. Francis Ministries Primacy Specialist who will be uh, giving an update and who has prepared the uh, family plan of service. Okay, Your Honor, hope for the mother, Rebecca Henderson. We're both present and ready. Your Honor, I'm Tate Elders on behalf of the father. I believe he's here. There he is. We're both here. Stacey Zavala on behalf of Nathaniel, here and ready. All right, thank y'all. Um, all right, Ms. Grant, what do we have new since the court report was filed? Um, we have, we've had a few incidents with Nathaniel at placement um, since the court report. Um, Nathaniel did call me and reported that a staff member hit him. Um, 
that staff member is no longer employed as facility. He has been let go. Um, and then he somehow managed to tie a sheet together and went out of the second story window of the placement. Um, we do have safety and supervision plans in place now that require um, at least one staff member to be present on the second floor at all times so that Nathaniel's not able to do things like that um, and try to keep him safe. But um, the investigation for the staff member is ongoing because he, Nathaniel did have some bruising on his arm. Um, we also have a second safety plan um, because he's, he's the youngest child there and he is being bullied quite a bit. And so um, staff are constantly keeping an eye on him, making sure that the other boys in the home are not bullying, hitting him and things like that. Where is he placed? Uh, New Beginnings in Houston. It's in RTC. We think this is a good fit. Not happy with what I'm hearing. Yeah. Um, so, so far they've been cooperative, um, you know, with our safety plans and doing things that, you know, that can keep him safe. Um, so, so far I've, I've talked to Nathaniel since all of these incidents happened. He said he is okay. He feels better now that that staff member is gone. Um, my last conversation with him, things were getting better with other boys as far as the bullying. So they are working on it. All right. Um, I read in the report that Mr. Bell had indicated he wanted to relinquish parental rights. Is that correct still, or we had a change of heart? No, our, our position is I, I thought somebody was going to, and maybe it's me, I don't know, somebody was going to do a, a waiver of interest in the child and he was going to sign off on it. That hasn't happened. And so he's here. Um, but that's still the plan. I don't, I kind of thought the state was doing it, but if not, I'll do one. It doesn't matter to me. It probably just slipped through our cracks, Your Honor, trying to get ready for a trial next week. So, but we'll, we'll make sure we get one out. Okay. And I'll come back around to that in a few minutes. Um, Ms. Naranjo? Um, my client has some concerns about the RTC. Um, he was not notified about the incident involving Nathaniel until about a week later. This is the first I've heard of the incident of him climbing with a blanket to get out of the RTC. This is the first that I've heard about the bullying today. And there's been trouble with um, the mother communicating with the RTC to even have visits with Nathaniel, having to call several times, not getting a response and going straight to voicemail. So I don't know if this RTC is still appropriate to have be placement for the child. All right, of course, I'm going to obviously want input from Mrs. Zavala about what she's found out, but uh, I, I share Ms. Henderson's concerns. So uh, I just kind of want to hear from everybody and then we'll figure out what we're going to do. Uh, Mr. Eldridge, did you have anything else? No, Your Honor, I don't have anything else. Okay, all right, Ms. Zavala, you're on the hot seat. <laughs> so um, I had a, a follow up Zoom with Nathaniel just recently. He actually seemed pretty good when he talked about the the incident off of the second floor. It sounded like if I was understanding him correctly, another kid almost like dared him and said, I'll give you my extra points or my extra candy. I didn't didn't quite follow, but some some reward system that they had. This other kid was like, hey, if you do this, I'll give you mine. Um, so it didn't seem to me like an attempt to run away at that point. Um, of course, it's not what he should be doing. Um, he he seemed to feel safe there when we spoke. However, he really, really would like to be closer so that he could have in-person visits with his dad, his dad, Jackson. Um, so Rebecca, he, he refers to... Rebecca as Jackson and dad. Um, and he really wants to be able to have in-person visits. Um, and if he's closer, that would really help with that. Um, I, you know, he, he didn't seem to feel unsafe there, but there was a definite desire to want to be closer so there could be some in-person contact. And I, I think that would be a great idea. 
if we could find a closer. And it lets all of us have more eyes on him if there are any concerns in terms of safety at placement. Um, and then when he was talking, he, he talked to me a little bit about bullying. And I may have misunderstood, but it sounded to me like he felt like he was being bullied a little bit at school, but didn't really talk about being bullied at placement. But maybe I misunderstood him when he was talking about that. Um, but either way, I would love to see him closer if there's a placement that we can get him closer. He'd, okay. he'd also like to have in-person visits with Crystal, who he refers to as mom, if if at all possible. Well, okay. Um, how long has he been in this placement? Is I know he, we're the status here, so. He was placed on August 10th. Yeah, the original one. August 10th? Yes. Okay. Has he been there even long enough that a therapist is, you know, are we getting any therapy notes for that they're making any headway, any progress, any, I mean, you know, I, I hate moving kids around. I, I'll move them for the right reasons, you know, but I, I just, I don't want to move for move's sake, you know. Um, we got he have, feedback there. So, sorry. <laughs> he does have a therapist that he's seen, but I, I don't know how often. It sounds like it's supposed to be once a week, um, but maybe there have been some weeks that have not been, uh, you know, that they have not had the sessions. And and I did forgot, forget to mention, he would like to talk to somebody about adjusting his medicine. He feels like He's getting more write-ups at school and a little bit more anger and, and impulses. And he thinks maybe one of his meds needs to be adjusted. And that's coming from him. Well, everybody knows that our options as far as RTs are limited in this part of the world. Um, what we've got. I know the one in Level Land. We get anything in Lubbock? I don't know if you would qualify for the QRTP program yet, you know, um, but Level Land yeah. might be a good fit. That's I great. So we'll get um, I, I think we can reach out to our placement team and see. Um, if Leveland has any room for him, we can we can definitely do that. All right, let's look and see. Uh, you know, obviously, it's always better if we can get kids closer. I mean, that's that's usually positive. I, I you know I don't feel like he's been at this other RT long enough to really probably establish some super great rapport with a therapist or you know anything else. So. If we can move him, it'd be better to move now and then keep him in the same place, hopefully for a while. Um, so let's let's take a look at it. Let's see if we can't get him closer. So if if you are able to find placement, you know I think it's run it past everybody, and if nobody has any issues with it, then that's fine. Y'all can go ahead and move him. If anybody's got a problem, then you, and everybody knows how to ask for hearing. So, okay. All right, then today I'll continue the department as temporary managing conservator. I'll continue his placement till we find something else. Uh, I am going to order the service plans as an order of the court today. So for uh, parents, um, what I will tell you today is that failure to work those services can result in the child not going home to either of you. It can also mean termination of parental rights. Uh, Mr. Bell, I understand what your position is, so we'll just see where, you know, how that goes and what develops with that. But uh, at this at this point, I need to make sure you both understand that. So, um, you know, if if you want the child to come home, you got to get going on services. Uh, all right, then um, I will see everybody back. 
uh, on January 30th of 2024 for, uh, that'll be a nine o'clock docket. That'll be our next hearing, the initial permanency hearing. Until then, then I'm going to make a finding that it, there would be a continuing and ongoing danger for the child to return home at this time. And uh, so hopefully we can find new placement closer. Case for a review hearing, be good for we are conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and consent of the uh, parties. Uh, we're also live streaming and Ms. Taylor is making our record. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Erica Cantrell is my permanency specialist and we're present ready on it. Brooks Barfield, uh, attorney for uh, Lindsay Archer. I think she's on here. I'm just not seeing. There she, okay, there. All right, got it. Jeff Hill on behalf of Keaton Hensley, um, father to the Hensley children. And I'm not sure. Oh, there he is. Yes, he's here. We're ready. Tasty Hammond for the father. Sorry, TD. <laughs> That's all right. T.D. Hammonds for the father, Jonathan Ard for C. Judge. He's still in the Potter County Jail. Okay, and Ms. Taylor, I think you got Ms. Zabala probably. Yeah. And I'll be with Kata. And Kata's here. I was going to say, okay. Everybody was talking, so did you hear that, Ms. Taylor? Okay, all right. All right, then what do we have new since our court reports are filed? Nothing specifically new. I did get an update from Troy Timmons on uh, Lindsay. He says that she is participating um, in therapy. She did miss her appointment yesterday, um, but nothing specific on the progress um, in the counseling sessions. Girls are doing great. Um, Delilah and Lorelai really enjoy being in dad's home. Uh, they have a really good schedule going for them. Juniper is doing great in her, the relative placement. And um, the only concerns um, Delilah and Lorelai report is that they feel like visitation is too long. Um, and so that's the only thing that they've reported to me. So everything visitation is- with, Visitation with whom? With mom. Okay. How long are the visits? And um, we were doing three hours and then we went down to two. Um, and so uh, Lorelai specifically just feel, continues to feel like they're too long. Um, it interrupts their homework and such like that. Um, they're afraid to miss out on school events, things like that. So that's the only concerns um, I did. Um, it was also addressed with them and therapy with Leanne LaFever. And she's not opposed to a decrease in visitation if that's what the girls are wanting. But that's really the only big concern right now. And then with mom, just the continue ongoing concerns of changes in her beliefs and such like that, as far as the girls. How often are those visits? They are weekly. What day are they? They're on Mondays. Or no, excuse me, Tuesdays now. Well, I mean, I guess the question is, have the visits kept them from doing some school activity or have the visits prevented them from getting their schoolwork done or have they truly interfered or is it just too much at once? I I don't know specifically. I mean, Keaton can probably answer to like the interference of like their homework and such like that. Um, when they do have events, they just don't attend the visit. I mean, that's their, they had a parade that they were in and they really wanted to do that. And you know, with their ages, I let them kind of choose, you know, visit or this, and they chose to go to the, um, to participate in the parade and such, but just, just their voiced concerns. Okay. And they are in, I'll add to it. They are in, um, the visits are in plain view. So I feel like, you know, the added drive time and such like that as well. Maybe be, you know, kind of while they're feeling like it's too long, but it's a good halfway point for every, for, you know, Juniper and such in them as well. So. So where's Mr. Hensley? Live? He is in Amarillo. Amarillo. Where's mom? She's in Amarillo as well. Juniper, that's, that's elsewhere, right? 
Yes, ma'am. She's in New Deal. In Mr. Hensley and Jennifer's placement, I, I thought I had read they work, they work together and then the kids get to see each other that way, correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Delilah and Lorelai go every other weekend with the Up Churches and they go Friday evening and come home Sunday. So yes. they get a, you know, very extended sibling visit, which, which has been great. They really enjoy those. So what if we do mom's visitation with Lorelai and Delilah here in Amarillo and they don't have to do the traveling? I mean, I wouldn't, that's an option. And then we can just continue with Juniper um, separately. Yeah. I mean, the kids are getting to see each other. So yes, it's not ideal, but you know, <laughs> Ms. Hale, what, you know, the, the I know you want time with your kids. So, I mean, it's, you know, I, I hate to, I know I had increased the visits to three hours and, and at our last hearing. And so we've always well, pulled back because of the kids feelings, but maybe if they don't have to do the travel, it would be, you know, more workable. We've also been having some concerns with the supervisor of our visits, uh, upsetting Delilah and Lorelai and wanting them to sit still the whole time and they just cannot sit still for two hours no kid can all right so that would also change if we did those visits in amarillo no it was it would still remain bianca um i don't know if i specifically agree with Lindsay. there are issues in the visitation um and so they're they're allowed to go play with they go to mcdonald's things like that so um, I'm not Bianca, but I have read her, um, her notes, you know, there, there's ongoing concerns with visitation, but, um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. She makes them sit for two hours. Well, my inclination is to try changing it up like this. And I, I mean, I'll get everybody else's input, but before we do it, but that's my, my feeling. Um, Okay, Mr. Burfield. Your Honor, uh, I, I, I really um, under, un, understand the concern uh, of travel on the part of kids and everything. However, I, I think Lindsay's doing everything she could possibly do in this case. Uh, and as, as we know, sometimes in cases as well, um, we don't let necessarily the children absolutely dictate what happens. And that happens in the normal private arena as well. Also, I do believe there's probably been some tension between Bianca and Lindsay uh, in, in regards to visits. I think at one point during a visit, uh, um, you know, um, there was some sign language issues and, and Bianca got involved. And so I think there's some tension there. My recommendation is find somebody else besides a Bianca to supervise the visits. Uh, I think that might minimize the tension if that's at all possible. Uh, I don't, but I mean, that's obviously up to the court uh, and resources, obviously. But, but I think the court's idea of moving the visits would be a good idea. Uh, to try to maybe alleviate some of these concerns on behalf of on behalf of travel time stuff like that. So I, I don't I don't think that's a, a a bad thing, quite frankly. Judge, um, I will address that just real quick if you don't mind. Um, I I do. I mean, there is. I feel like there is tension be between Bianca and Lindsay. But there's issues with Lindsay maintaining the rules in the visitation. She's on her phone a lot in the visitation. We understand that she she does have diabetes um, and she is checking her blood sugar quite often during visitation. Um, we've asked her, you know, I've, I've tried to have conversations with her. You know, if you're having a high blood sugar, just let Bianca know, you know, or low blood sugar, like things like that. And we can we can address that um, if we need to get a hearing and have Bianca come in here. I mean. Bianca's doing her job, and I feel like that is um, is what's causing the conflict. Um, so I think Bianca's done very well in the visitation. 
Well, I, I think if you have to check your blood sugar with diabetes and the worker's not letting you do that or try to find language for sign language and the worker's not letting you do that, I don't think that's doing your job. I think that's being overbearing and I think that's causing tension. I understand. Um, we've asked mom, you know, just tell us, show us, you know, things like that. I understand she has diabetes, um, but we just need to know. I've asked her multiple occasions, you know, was your blood sugar running high? Just let me know. I can let Bianca know. But we have strict visit, you know, rules with visitation. Stay off your phone. Your attention needs to be. Um, she checks for blood sugar on her phone. Okay, Brooks, I understand that. My son has diabetes as well. Okay. So that's all I'm saying is, is that if all, all she's now, if she's having conversations with someone and everything like that, I get it. But I don't think that's what's happening. And if it is, by golly, we will address that properly. And that is and, and that's absolutely inappropriate. And Erica, I absolutely agree. And that's all I'm saying is that if that is what the phone is being used for, I, I get that. It, it, but if it's and that's only I mean, I'm not going to I think I think we've made our point with the judge both ways. But I think it's I think some common sense could come into play as well. Well, I would think it would be fairly apparent whether she's having a conversation with somebody or on posting on social media or, or doing something like that versus checking her blood sugar. Is it, I mean, Ms. Cantrell, is it not that apparent or obvious? That's the or thing. We- There's suspicion that that's not just what's going on. I mean, I understand the checking the blood sugar, but like I said, Every, I mean, from what Bianca says, it's every, you know, five to 10 minutes. I mean, it it is a consistent checking the phone. Um, If she's having issues with her blood sugar, I mean, I told her just simply tell Bianca, my blood sugar is 600. That is understandable. My blood sugar is 40. But I mean, like I said, what, I don't know if anybody in here has diabetes, but you know, okay. I know. I know. Okay. So. But it's not a, it does not have to be consistent. You know, she has a pump. Her body is pumping insulin, things like that. It's just very distractive in the visitations. Um, and I feel like Bianca's doing the best that she can. But, you know, if mom would be forthcoming with information whenever that's asked, then we could nip that in the bud real quick and say, okay, we are having issues with blood sugar today. But mom's not, she's not doing that. And so, and that's what we've asked her to do. If you're having issues with blood sugar, you know, and especially if it's like six or 700, you know, that's a medical issue, you know, like maybe we need to, you know, things like that. But um, we, we've tried to understand and help mom, but she does not want to be forthcoming with exactly what's going on. We don't mind her looking up signs. We don't mind her doing those things. It's the, you know, she gives pushback when asking, you know, hey, what's this? What's that? And like I said, if we need to have Bianca in a hearing, you know, we can go full understanding. But me and Brooks, we don't know fully. Neither of I are there for visits. So um, we're just trying to address the concern. Exactly. And that's all we're trying to do. And as long we're just trying to make the visits as smooth as possible for the kiddos. That's really the whole point of this. Um, uh, Lindsay's heard everything we've said. So perhaps that will um, take care of that situation on both ends. And and I think the judges, again, your honor, I think your suggestion, my, my main concern, obviously, I think everybody's main concern here, judge, is if the girls are having travel problems, issues, concerns, we want to keep them in a good place. And, and I think your suggestion is what we need to try. The Bianca situation, I guess, you know, that, that's a situation that hopefully can get, we'll see how things go. And if, again, if we need to address that further, I guess we can address it further uh, in the future, either by motion or, or, or emails or just getting together. So that's just our main concerns at this point. Okay, so all I can really say is, Ms. Hale, just be mindful. Please only use your phone for that one purpose during this. Yes, yes, Judge. That And that's what I do. The only thing with every five minutes is that if it's high or low, it goes off every five minutes until the situation is remedied. And I think that's what she's thinking. I'm checking and I haven't checked it. It just constantly dings every five minutes. And the girls announce that every time. Your sugar mom, your sugar mom. And I'm just like, yeah. Or they'll ask me and I'm just like, yep, it's my sugar. But I only actually check it once or twice because I know it's going to be high with eating fast food and the situation. Okay. I, I don't know what else to do other than that. 
if this is and if this is the way that mom has monitored her condition and and will continue to monitor it, this is going to be part of the kids' lives. Yes, ma'am. So, okay. Um, all right, Mr. Hill. Judge, uh, Mr. Hensley uh, is obviously willing to facilitate with respect to, you know, visitations. He'll, he'll adapt, he'll facilitate, whatever. Uh, he's very happy with the way things are going. He believes the girls are doing well in his home. Um, and, uh, you know, there's really no, no complaints on his end, and, and he'll do everything he can to, to help. He has uh, asked uh, that, any, you know, any medical records be uh, made available to him. And they, that was just a chat he just sent me, and that's why I was late getting unmuted because I, I couldn't figure out how to get back out of that screen. So I apologize. But um, so if there's some medical records or something, he's asking that those be made avail available to him. And I don't know anything more specific than, than that. Okay, Mr. Hill, I think I'm having some internet problems, obviously, today. I, why? I don't know. I'm in the same place I'm always at. But um, anyway, you were breaking up for me. So what meant so what medical records? Judge, I'm not sure. Maybe we can just get Mr. Hensley to unmute and tell us what he's what he's okay. looking for. Okay. Yes, um, yes, Judge. Um, I'm just wondering uh, any and all medical records that Lindsay might have. Uh, we have an appointment for Lorelai's cochlear uh, appointment coming up soon. And the girls are talking about how they normally have a binder full of stuff every time they go down to Dallas and I don't have that binder, so I just just want to make sure I get all my my T's crossed, my I's dotted. You know, make sure I have everything that they could possibly need. Uh, the remote and it's like extra parts. I'll get that somehow too. It's not information; it's just stuff they can program for backups. Okay, well, we, just, we need I'm to be sure that he's. We need to be sure that he has what he needs to take to those appointments. Absolutely. Thank okay. you, Judge. And I have medical records as well. So if I can definitely share those with him. All right. All right. And Mr. Hammonds. Nothing to report, Judge. His bond has been reduced a little bit. I don't know that he's going to be able to bond out in the near future. So. All right. He's doing what he he's doing what he can in there. So Ms. Samala. Your Honor, the girls are all doing really well. Um and when I met with them, the visits had already gone down to two hours. And so I just talked about, you know, is there anything you want to need to tell the judge, things like that? And they said, No, everything's good. Um, but I it does make sense especially because the girls are able to see each other. We want to make sure that that, that continues with Juniper and, and the older girls. And I do think both Keaton and, and Kim would be able to do that. Um, I'm, I'm sure they'd be willing to FaceTime to, to replace that weekly visit that they would have. Um, so I, I think that may be the way to go to have to, to cut down on that travel time. Um, but the girls are all doing really good. I thought I saw that Mr. Hill had filed a motion about child support. I do agree it would be in the best interest of the older girls to have that money that's currently coming out of Keaton's check regularly to be stopped. Um, so that can be funneled into the household uh, for them. Um, but I think everything, I think that addresses anything else I was going to talk about. But they're doing really well. Thought we talked about the child support thing at the last hearing, and I just said somebody get me a withholding order that, to stop that. I, Judge, I filed. I, I filed a motion in order, and I, I'm sorry. I thought you signed that order, but um, perhaps you haven't. But I thought you had signed the order. Well, let's just look and see. It may be a situation of just getting it over to the attorney general's office. Termination of wage assignment order, September 13th. So, yeah, it hadn't had very long to process yet. So should be happening soon, I hope. But, yeah, we need to make sure somebody's called it to the attention of the attorney general's office. 
I'll contact them and make sure they know that order exists. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, then. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, continue the department as temporary managing conservator of all three children. Um, and I will continue um, all three children's current placements. Um, I'll make a finding that there's a continuing and ongoing danger to return the children to their mother at this point in time, uh, but that Lorelai and Delilah are placed with their dad. Um, we are coming up on a final hearing in this matter, December 5th of 2023. I don't recall, but have you all attempted mediation in the case? We, we have not at this point, Your Honor. Um, I was going to be reaching out to everybody pretty soon on that. Um, but we can go ahead and get the court in order um, to get that set up also. All right. Um, all right. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and order that mom's visits with Lorelai and Delilah will be in Amarillo. It'll be two hours. Let's 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 start with that. See how that goes. If things are going better, then we can bump it back up to three. You know, if if things are, you know, without that travel, additional travel time. Or if it's better to do two hours one day and do an hour or something another day of the week. I mean, I'm I'm flexible. So, um, you know, I just don't know. I don't know what that can be accommodated, but um, but for sure, two hours and let's try it and see how this goes. And Judge Mom, and, just and I'm the, fine with the I'm fine with the girls having FaceTime or whatever, what whenever they want. That's fine. That's not problem. Mom will still be traveling the one week, once a week to see Juniper and Plainview, correct? So yeah. We'll, we'll need to get a different day on when the visitations in Amarillo will happen. So yeah. So. Yep. Okay. Um. All right, so I'm going to order you all the mediation. You can let me know whether you all think you need an attorney mediator or whether you can go over to the DRC, see what you work out. Yes, ma'am. Okay, then I'll see everybody back December 5th. Judge, if Mr. Archer is still in is still in jail, do you want me to attend mediation? I don't know that I could add a whole lot. You know, Mr. Hans, I think that's just going to be whether or not you have any direction from him about anything. Okay. I'll, I'll go from there. I'll, I'll let him know if. Yeah. And Judge, when I send out notice, I'll, I'll have everybody on it and I'll get in touch with everybody to try to figure out the best time and we can get something set up. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All. Or is it Thank Wendy? you. Judge. Thanks, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Judge. Wildy, Wildy, Your Honor. Judge. Wildy, that's what I thought. Okay. Uh, and we are here today set for our final. We are conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. We are also live streaming, and Ms. Taylor is making our record today. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We're present, ready, on. <laughs> Natalie Archer, attorney ad litem for Shauna Wildey, present and ready. Senator Araujo, guardian ad litem for Shauna Wildey, present and ready. T.D. Hammonds, attorney for Ronald Wildey Jr., father of temperance, ready to proceed, Judge. Stacey Zavala, on behalf of temperance. All right. You can call your first witness, Mr. Strapp. Call Emily Braden. How did the department become involved in the case involving this child? We got involved due to a domestic dispute um, between Miss Wildy and Mr. Wildy in the presence of the child. Okay. Um, were you able to meet with the parents? Yes, I was. Um, when was that? Do you know around the date? I met with them on March 10th, 2022. Okay. When did the um, incident happen that was reported? The incident reportedly happened um, on or around March 7th. Okay. Um, and you were you able to meet with both parents on March 10th? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, did the parents tell you what happened? Yes, they did. Okay. 
Uh, did it, the parents admit to uh, the incident that had happened? Yes. Um, Your Honor, what, I am so sorry. I can't hear a thing because the lawn guy is right outside of my window. Um, I don't know how to fix that. Uh, you okay. can't. So um, let's give it just a couple minutes. Miss um, Braden, you said the parents did admit to what happened that night. Yes, they did. And did they? What did they tell you happened that night? Uh, they were talking about Mr. Wildey being under the influence of alcohol, and they had a domestic violence incident in the car where he choked and headbutted Miss Wildey while Temperance was in the back seat. Did they admit to any other? Um, did they admit to Mr. Wildey having an alcohol problem? Yes, they both did. And did they admit that he becomes aggressive when he's under the influence of alcohol? Yes, they did. Did the department ask um, the parents to screen farm drug screen? Yes. And were they receptive to that? Did they want to do that? Um, initially, both of them denied wanting to do so, but they did both go that day. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and those screens came back negative at that time? That's correct. And those were UAs? Yes. Do you know whether anything came of the alleged incident that started this case? Um, are you asking regarding like criminal? Yes. Are you, or do you know if a criminal case evolved out of the um, domestic dispute? Yes. I spoke with the detective who was working the case and she talked about um, pressing charges regarding assault causing bodily injury, family violence. Okay. Uh, and that would have been against that. Mr. Willie. Judge, I would ask to admit exhibit number seven. It's a certified copy of, of the assault family violence case that happened on or about March 7th of 2022. Um, it is a indictment and also the order of deferred adjudication uh, for Mr. Wildey out of that case. What happened after what happened after that? Um, did the department try to work with the family to prevent removal in any kind of way? We did. We spoke about Mr. Wildey no longer being at the residence um, because of the violence and the alcohol. Um, and then shortly after that, we were notified that Mr. Wildey um, had been arrested again um, for having alcohol in the car. So it was a probation violation. Um, after that, I met with the family again. They agreed for him to no longer be at the residence, to have supervised visitation with temperance and for the family to work ongoing services through family based. OK. Did um did the department or did mom agree to have a supervising party with mom? Yes, she was um she became distressed whenever Mr. Wildey was asked to leave the home. Um she said that she couldn't care for temperance on her own, that she was scared of relapsing. Um, and so she needed support. Um the only support that she had was a friend by the name of Miss Rose Fredoloso. Okay. And did the department allow Daniel, I, no, I didn't get that name. Rose Fredoloso. Uh, and did the department allow her to, Ms. Fredoloso, um, be a supervising party? Yes, we did. And how did that go? Did you set up visitations with dad supervised? Uh, we were in the process of doing that. Um, we hadn't set up an actual visitation with him yet. Okay. Um, and you said, yeah, what does that mean? Does, did something so happen? our plan was to get them involved in family-based and then the family-based caseworker would get supervised visitation set up through the department. We didn't want visitation to be supervised by mom because of the domestic violence. Okay. And did anything happen with the supervising party? Yes. So are you asking in regards to Mr. Wildey or Ms. Wildey? Uh, and Ms. Wildey with the supervising party, Ms. Fred Alessio. Yes. So whenever we went to the home for the family-based assessment, um, I spoke with Ms. Fredoloso, who told me that she had just used methamphetamine the day before um, and that she would be positive on an oral drug screen if given to her. Um, and so Ms. Fredoloso was asked to leave the home. And Ms. Wildy, again, she became distressed, um, said that she couldn't take care of the kiddo on her own. Um, and so we tried talking about doing protective daycare, but Ms. Wildy was against that idea. Okay. And... Explain what protect, protective daycare is. The child would be in daycare um, during the day okay. um, to help keep eyes on the kiddo where Miss Wildy would be able to do um, receive mental health services or whatever she needed to ensure the safety of the child. Okay. All right. And is it is it called protective daycare just because the department's involved? I mean, it's 
Sounds yeah. like you're kind of set up as a normal daycare. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. But it's, is that the department that helps with that daycare situation? That's correct. Okay. Um, and did Ms. Will, do you want to do that? No, she did not. Okay. Um, was anything else offered to Ms. Will? Um, well, we were exploring different supports for her, other people who could possibly be supervised um, or could help her, and she denied having anybody. And then we helped her with um, light gas. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> during this time, did you have any other contact with Mr. Wilder? Or y'all were still just trying to get things set up with him? We were still trying to get things set up with Miss with the whole visitation, and I was checking in almost daily with Miss Wildy. Okay. Um, now you had mentioned earlier um, that Mr. Wildy was arrested for a DWI. Is that correct? That's correct. Do you know around when that was? It was on or around March 16th. Okay. Um, now, was he, um, was, was there a, do you know whether there was a, another DWI incident around the time of the original um, investigation? In yes. From my knowledge, there was a driving while intoxicated charge for him for March 7th. Okay. And Judge, I know it's not a conviction, but there is a, I would ask to admit exhibit number five, which is a certified copy of the indictment against Mr. Wildy on that is from a DWI from owner about March 7th, which is the day of the initial uh, in, intake that came in. Thank you. Ms. Braden, um, what happened after Ms. Fredoloso was asked to leave the home and Ms. Wildy declined the help as far as the daycare? And we did an oral screen on Ms. Wildy that day as well. Um, I advised that we didn't have any, um, it was all based on risk. We didn't have any immediate safety concerns at that time. Um, and so with Ms. Fertiloso leaving the home, um, I advised that I would continue checking on them. I came back, um, the following morning and Ms. Fertiloso was back at the home. Okay. So less, less than 24 hours after Ms. Fertiloso was advised she could not be in the home due to admitting to methamphetamine, she was back in the home. That's correct. Did that give you concern of the uh, lack of protection from mom? Yes, it did. And allowing a admitted drug user into the home for less than 24 hours after being asked to leave? That's correct. Um, what happened after that? Um, at that point, um, we spoke with, um, I talked with my supervisor about everything and we talked to our legal team about it not being a safe environment for the child. Okay. Um, and did the department ask for a, um, exigent removal at that time? Or yes, we did. Removal at that time? Yes, we did. Um, was that based on, no, on Amy? She didn't get that. Did name get, sorry. Or you did? Okay. I, I didn't, I didn't hear it. <laughs> did the department ask for a removal at that time? Yes, we did. Okay. And was that based on concerns of mom's willingness to protect the child? Yes, in addition to her mental health and as well as additional concerns, um, her behavior had changed drastically from the beginning of the case. Um, she had begun acting erratically and being around other substance users. There was a concern that she was also using. Okay. And you, you mentioned mental health. Did uh, mom bring that up to you? Did she state she had any issues? Yes, she admitted to struggling with um, depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder. Okay. Did, do you know whether she was being treated for any of those? She was not being treated. Okay. So there was, she was not on any medications for it or having, um, seeing anybody. That's correct. As far as you know. Yes. Okay. Um, did you also ask for the removal due to not being able to place back with dad, um, due to the admitted alcohol issues and the, um, domestic violence issues? That's correct. And the department tried to find other family or supervising parties. Is that correct? Yes, we did. And were unable to obtain anybody else. That's correct. Do you believe that at the time it was in the best interest of the child to um, remove from the situation? Yes, I do. <clears throat> and um, where was the child placed? And the child was placed in a foster home in Amarillo. Okay. Um, since you've gone off of the case, have you had any contact with the child since then? No. Um, and you just heard this, had this case up and through the adversary hearing. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Archer. 
Ms. Braden, in the domestic violence incident that you mentioned at the beginning of this case, was my client the wrongdoer or just the victim? In that instant, she was the victim. Um, and when you met with her in the beginning, did she say that she couldn't take care of the child alone or did she say that you were just removing her support system by taking Ronald away and then her friend? Well, she, she expressed concern that she was going to relapse because she didn't have anybody and she couldn't care for the child by herself. Relapse yeah. from what? Relapse on methamphetamine. Okay. So had she already admitted to using that? Yes, prior. Um, was this before or after the urine test was negative? This was before the urine test was no. Let me check. Real quick. She had admitted to the meth use, the previous meth use prior to the UA drug screen that was done. Okay. Was this before she became pregnant with Tempe that she admitted using? Yes. Okay. Did uh, Mrs. Wildy say why she didn't want temperance in a daycare? Um, I don't remember what the reason was. And isn't it true that she mentioned her dad and her aunt when you asked her if there were family members available to take care of temperance? She provided, she provided an aunt who we were um, able to talk to um, to do a home study on. Her father was not able to because of health issues, I believe. How about a, her, her cousin? We explored all options that were provided at the time. And so in regards to a supervising party to her, there weren't any that were capable of doing that. And why was the cousin and aunt not available? I couldn't tell you the reason right now. Now you said Ms. Fredoloso was ordered out of the house, but then she returned. That's correct. Um, is it true she only returned to get her belongings? That's what they reported. Yes. And was there any evidence that when she came back to get her belongings, she was ever around temperance? She was in the home with temperance whenever I got there and Miss Wildy wouldn't open the door. So would that be a no? I, that's a yes. I believe she was around temperance. But is that speculation? It's I possible Miss Fredoloso could have come to get her things and never been around a child. Is that true? No, they were in the same house. It's a small but house. There are different rooms in the house, correct? They're... There were different rooms in the house. Okay. About the um, mental status of my client, isn't it true that she said that she questioned whether she might have bipolar, but she never said she was diagnosed with it? She told me that she had depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder. I'll pass the witness. All right. And uh, Ms. Naranjo? Ms. Brayden, every conversation you had with Ms. Wildy, did she seem to understand what you were asking her? Yes, she did. Did she give you appropriate responses? Yes, she did. Did you have any reason to doubt her mental health status as to being competent? In regards to being competent, no. Now, as far as Ms. Rodoso, do you have any personal knowledge that she was residing in the home after she was asked to leave? Yes. From her belongings still being in the home after leaving, she took her some of her belongings the day that she left the home. But can you say for a fact that she was for sure living in the home? No, her belongings were there. I'll pass witness. Mr. Hammonds? In your conversations with Ronald Wildy, did he ever give you any family members' names or friends that might help with Tempe? No, he didn't. I have nothing further, Judge. Okay, and Ms. Zavala. When you returned to the home the day after Ms. Fredoloso had left and you found her there, um, did you have a conversation with Ms. Wildy where she expressed concerns about Ms. Fredoloso having to live on the streets? Yes, she did. Did that conversation lead you to believe uh, that Ms. Wildy was allowing her to stay in the home instead of on the streets? Yes, it did. After removal, but before the adversary, you remained the investigator, correct? That's correct. Um, so would you have been the investigator on April 12th of 22? Yes, I did. Uh, did you send uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wildy to, to hair follicle drug screen? Yes, I did. Did you receive the results of those? I did. Screens? And what, what was Mr. Wildy's drug test result? 
Let's see. It was April 11th. And you're asking about Mr. Wildey's drug screen? Yes. It was positive for amphetamine, methamphetamine, and cocaine. What were the levels for methamphetamine? Uh, 152,278. And the level for cocaine? 4,195. And amphetamine? Amphetamine was 18,558. Was Shauna Wildey positive on that 411 drug test? Yes, she was. Uh, what was she positive for? Amphetamine and methamphetamine. What was her methamphetamine level? 41,462. And her amphetamine level? 4,111. As part of your investigation, um, do you have to review the records of previous CPS history? Yes, I do. How many other children besides, well, how many other children uh, did Miss Wildey play back? Objection, relevant. <laughs> How many other children um, of Miss Wildes have been removed and terminated? Objection. So, Ms. Archer, are you objecting? Yes, I am. I want to object on relevance since we're looking at this yeah, case and not the other children. It's uh, all over real. It's a relevant ground of termination. There were I seven. Assume, I assume that's where Ms. Zavala is headed, but um, I'm all over real. I'm sorry, Ms. Brayden, you can answer. Oh, I'm sorry, there were seven. And why did the records reflect that those rights were terminated? Um, there was a history of methamphetamine use for many years and also um, concerns of sexual abuse and domestic violence. Was that last termination back in 2015? Yes, I believe so. So we've got documented meth use for mom going back for quite some time. Yes. You may have already testified to this, but when you met with Mr. and Mrs. Wildey back in March, did mm -hmm. Mr. Wildey admit to relapsing and struggling with alcoholism? Yes, he did. And he admitted to choking and headbutting Miss Wildey? Yes. I pass the witness. All right, Mr. Trout. Ms. Braden, during uh, your part of the investigation in after removal and into April, um, the drug screens, as you just testified to, came back positive for the hair follicles, correct? That's correct. And did, um, do you know whether they were, was concerned for the child of possibly being positive? Yes, there was. Was, do you know if there was an investigation opened into that? Um, a different investigation? Yes, a, a criminal mine. investigation. Oh, yes, there was a criminal investigation. Do you know if anything came from that? Um, from what I understood, they were going to present charges for um, child endangerment. Oh, uh, is that on mom and dad? Yes, I believe so. Your Honor, I'd also ask to admit exhibits number three and number six, um, which are the indictments from uh, the incident we were discussing. They are the uh, indictments on abandoning and endangering a child. Um, against the mother and against the father um, in regards to temperance. During your time um, at the end, parents were allowed visitations, is that correct? That's correct. And visits were supervised and they went fine. Yes, that's correct. Your Honor, I would, I'd also ask to go ahead and admit um, exhibits number two and four. They're the affidavit of business records on the drug screens, um, the ones that Ms. Braden previously testify to under Mr. Ms. Zavala's questions are included in that packet. Your Honor, I have an objection to that on hearsay. And um, I found a case from the Texas Court of Appeals that say that drug test results should not be admitted in a termination case under the business record exception. It is NRA KCP 142 Southwest 3rd 574. Um, I believe that the department needs to prove that the test is recognized in the scientific community as valid, that the test was that was performed that day was performed according to the procedures that make the test valid. And I don't think you can wash that away in a termination case by calling it a business record. Um, these aren't business receipts, they're labs pretending to be business records. 
All right, let me make sure. NRA KCP 142 Southwest 3rd 574. Yes, Your Honor. All right, just so, so that we can keep moving. I, I'm not going to rule. I'm not going to admit I'm not going to rule on her objection until we've all seen the case, taken time to look at it, but we'll keep going for right now. This might not. I have no it's, further. It just we can just come. We'll come back to it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And I, I have no further questions for Ms. Brady. I'll pass the witness. Okay. All right. Um, regarding then the objection, Mr. Trout, I don't know whether you would need to recall Ms. Braden potentially. Possibly, Your Honor. Um, well. I don't know that I need to call, recall Ms. Braden on that. Um, it was simply she'd already testified to the results of those tests is why I asked to put them in at that time. So I don't know that I need to bring her in. Okay. Do you, uh, you hear me? I said, I don't believe I would need Ms. Braden again. Um, main reason I asked to admit these at that point was she had already testified to the results of that test. Um, so I'd ask to put them in, but I, I wouldn't have any other questions for her. I was just going to go ahead and have those admitted. All right. So any objection to Ms. Braden being released at this time? I have no, no objection. No objection from TD Hammonds, Judge. I would call um, Shauna Wilde. And Ms. Wilde, you've heard some testimony as far as um, drug use and alcoholism and domestic violence that we've been talking about today. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, Ms. Wilde, when was the last time you used methamphetamines? Um, I did have a relapse during the, the case and I'm I have since I have since then I have been to treatment completed the treatment and um because of other legal issues and my health uh, I have not been able to get back into a uh, drug program as of yet I am still actively looking to do that um as soon as I can I just uh, got out of the hospital uh two days ago I had to have surgery on my leg I had to have a blood clot removed from my leg okay. um did you give a positive drug screen at the hospital? Um, I do not think so. No, sir. You were not notified of any drug screen taken at the hospital this weekend? No, sir. Were you aware that CPS was called this weekend? Uh, no, sir. I was not. Um, <clears throat> so after that answer, can you tell me when the last time you used methamphetamine was? It's been a minute. I haven't. I've been around it, but I have not used. No. So you're still being around people who are using at that time. Uh, yes, I had uh, I had a roommate at that time that I did not know was using, but now has been removed from my home and Ob objection. Honor. I don't know when that time was and she's not giving definite answers of when, what she's talking about. OK, so when we're talking about something that, that has a certain time frame, you need to make sure that that's clear. Um, so why don't you ask your question again, Mr. Trout? When was the last time you used methamphetamines? Me, it has been a good over a month, two months at that. Um, I'm not real sure exactly when it was. Um, and with that, that my roommate, when I found out that they have been using and I asked them to please leave and they did immediately remove themselves from my home. Where is your home as well? I live at 4400. It is my father's trailer. It is a four bedroom, two bath trailer out in Richland Acres, close to Lake Tanglewood, sir. Okay. And how long have you lived there? It has been about three months, sir. Okay. So within the last three months, you've been around meth users and they have been living in your home? Um, but yes, um, but it, has, it was not the complete th three months, sir. It was only for probably maybe the last month. When you say the last month, you mean within the last 30 days? Yes, sir. Okay. So within the last 30 days, you've had been around methamphetamine users and you've had them living in your home. I, when I allowed them to move into my home, I did not know that they were still using. And yes. as soon as I did find out, I did have, I did ask them to leave. So yes. Yes. Okay. Um, we've been in this case now for 18 months. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you've known throughout the life of this case, methamphetamines was an issue. Yes, sir. And yet you still allow yourself to be around methamphetamine users and them to be in your home. 
I, like I said, sir, I did not know that they were using. I did not know that when I allowed them to move into my home. And as soon as I found out that they were, I asked them to leave and they did leave immediately. Did you know these people? Yes, I did. Are they friends of yours? Yes, they are. Oh, did they were. Know, excuse and me. You did not know ahead of time they were methamphetamine users? I I personally did not know because I, I had never uh, used with them or have ever seen them do this personally. And you said the last time you used was in the last, did you say two, three months, three, four months? I'm going to say two, three months. Yes, sir. Okay. You were court ordered to go to rehab. Is that correct? Um, I was, I was not court ordered. No, sir. I, I went on my own. I did, uh, I initiated that whole, uh, thing on my own. Um, as soon as they came aware of that, I was going to treatment. I believe that is when they said that, uh, put it in that I needed to have it be court ordered. You went to rehab and finished in May. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I believe so. Okay. So you have used since you have been out of rehab. Yes, sir. I had a slip up and I, I am very. Objection, uh, non-responsive. She answered the question. Yeah. Just, just answer what he's asked. Yes, ma'am. You understand that throughout this case, one of the main issues is your ability to care for temperance. Yes, sir. Due to a lifestyle that involved domestic violence and drug use. Yes, sir. And throughout the life of this case, you have been offered help with those issues. Is that correct? Um, I seeked help on my own on those, sir. I did uh, ask for additional things that I could do. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to say every time, but a lot of times when I did ask for any references or any help on that, I never received any from from Idarius or anybody I would get you know it would take a long time for them to get back to me and then it was I'm sorry we don't have anything we don't have that kind of services or something to that effect um so that's when I, I that's when I took it upon myself to look into treatment and such things as that so nobody throughout this case helped you with anything is that what you're saying I, no, sir. That's not what I, I said. I, uh, what I meant is that when I asked for help, it, it depended on the circumstance and what was going on at the time. I would ask for help, or if there was any other services that I that I could do, or any recommendations of anything I could do also do to help on my help me for to be a better mother for my daughter Temperance. Did you do an OSAR assessment? Yes, sir. I did. Were there any recommendations from that? Um. I believe there was, but I'm uh, I'm not for sure. I do not remember exactly what they were. Um, uh, I believe it was that I attend, you know, NA meetings and things like that. Um, but I'm not exactly for sure exactly what was the recommendations were. I do not have that uh, paper in front of me, sir. Um, did you go into a rehab clinic at one time and check yourself out twelve days later? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. And. So you attempted rehab once, you went and completed once, and then you still came back out and used. Yes, sir. Um, how long have you had a methamphetamine problem? Um, off and on, sir, for over 17 years, sir. Okay. Um, and you've had um, other CPS cases that involve this? Yes, sir. And those, those cases have been... Um, terminated they have been taken they did take my children from me but that has been uh, about 17 years ago sir um i have not had any contact with any of my other children except for my grown children um and i i personally do not feel that that would it has anything to do with my daughter temperance yes it does have the fact that i did have uh, a drug problem then i when my daughter was born i and my daughter both were clean i had been attending college okay your honor non responsive Okay, it's going to be on the scope of the question, so I'll sustain. You can ask another question. Ms. Weldy, my point being, as you just said, 17 years ago was your first case with methamphetamine and children, and today we're still dealing with you using methamphetamines in a CPS case. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I, on that, it because <clears throat> of the situations, that is, and I know that's not a, a reason or an excuse, that is just a reason or an excuse, but yes, sir. 
Ms. Wilde, do you still have a methamphetamine problem? Uh, yes, sir, but I am I am in currently. I'll, I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Archer, questions? Ms. Wilde, you said it's At the beginning of this case, did you give the department information on other family members that could supervise you in temperance? Yes, I did. And why were they found unsuitable? Do you know? I, I was never informed of that. I was never told why they were not suitable for temperance to be there or anything like that. I was not told why that she could not be sent there. Why did you not want to take the department up on their offer of daycare? Because I have never personally liked daycares because of the ratio of children per adult watching the children. Um, and I just personally don't do not approve of daycares because of that fact. And were you working at the time? Yes, I was. I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor, I, I didn't hear that last question. I heard the answer, but I didn't hear the question. I asked if she was working at the time. Oh, okay. okay. Are you currently on probation? Yes, ma'am, I am. And what was your health issue recently? Um, I had a blood clot in my left leg from my knee down to my foot. I had to have that removed. And has that delayed you a little bit in following up with the counseling and the NA that was suggested for you? Yes, ma'am. Has it also affected your job search? Yes, it has. Um, I, I was unable to uh, walk around. Um, I wasn't able to be able to move around very often. Uh, very much. I apologize. Have you had um, any counseling throughout the course of this case? I have with uh, when I was in treatment. And I also did ask about referrals on counseling from my Darius to continue my counseling before and after my uh, treatment. Why did you check out of the first drug program rehab? Because I was informed at the, when I went to the treatment that they would make arrangements to where I could see my daughter while I was in treatment. They did not tell me anything that I have to wait an X amount of time or anything. And then when I went to treatment, they told me that I would not be able to see my daughter for a blackout period, which I'm not exactly sure what that blackout period length was. But that is the reason why I left, because they were not willing to work with me on being able to see my daughter. And then shortly thereafter, very soon thereafter, you checked yourself into a second treatment? Yes, I did. Did they let you visit Tempest? Yes, they did. They were uh, Zoom meetings because I had went to Bastrop, Texas, and they did not feel that it would be a good idea to try to get Temperance on a on a plane or have that long of a uh, car ride to Bastrop, Texas. What services did you finish in this case? Um, everything that was required of me, um, the parenting, on the parenting, I did uh, complete one before the uh, family the uh, family plan was even given to me. I, we both, me and my husband, did complete a parenting class. They said that that was not good enough. So I did another parenting class. I did my OSAR. Um, everything that I was asked to do in the family plan, I did complete. And I did, like I did state, that I did ask Idarius on numerous occasions for references and who I may speak to on getting more counseling on uh, for that. And I was never given any kind of references or any kind of help on finding anybody. There was mention of you having some mental issues. Have you ever been diagnosed with bipolar disorder? I have never been diagnosed. I said when Ms. Braden was there, I said that I was told when I went, I was incarcerated that I may, may have it. I was never diagnosed by a physician on that. I have been diagnosed with depression and, anxi and anxiety. How do you feel about your relapse? I feel really bad. And um, like I said, it, it's, you know, just a reason or an excuse. I was very overwhelmed and over and not very burdened, overburdened with my le other legal issues from this case. And, you know, all the times I've asked for help and was not able to get any help. And that my living situation at the time, um, I was not able to even have my daughter brought you know, at for home visits or anything like that, that was an issue. Nobody was willing to help me try to get out of that apartment at the time. And I, I expressed that they there were issues with the apartment that I had no control over, that I personally fixed on my own, that the landlord did not fix. 
And that was the reason why I could not have uh, home visits at my apartment at that time because of those issues, because I took care of them, not the apartment complex. Do you recognize that doing meth or being around people that do meth um, would be harmful for temperance? Yes, I do. I'm, I have, that is why I have given pretty much given up my head. Uh, that is why I'm living at my father's trailer. Um, out out in the country. Um, I'm trying to alleviate all that. And um, I am willing to, if necessary, go back to treatment and get more help on that, go to any kind of drug treatment help that is available. Um, that has just been an issue. The only issue with that is that with my health condition and me having to have to go to the hospital, I have not been able to pursue that. Do you feel capable of taking care of templates? Yes, I do. Do you feel like it would be in temperance's best interest to stop contact with you? Yes, I do. I'll pass the witness. All right, uh, Ms. Ronho. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Wildey, did you complete a parenting class through Texas Panhandle Center on December 30th of 2022? Um, I believe that, yes, I did. And did you also attend going to Willow Springs Recovery Treatment Center in April of 2023? Yes, I did. And that you complete your 30 days with them and received a completion certificate on May 3rd of 2023. Yes, I did. And I did uh, give those a copy of that and letters of recommendation from my counselor there at that, that facility to Idarius. What skills and training did that residential treatment center give you to deal with your abuse and use of methamphetamine? It gave me a lot of tools to know how to avoid and to stay away from and to be able to gainfully, you know, keep a job and be able to take care of my daughter and not get overly stressed with, you know, everyday living situation and issues that way. What efforts have you made to address your relapse after it happens? Um, I, because of the other legal issues, I did start a uh, intensive outpatient program. Um, I was unable to complete that program because of my other, the other legal issues with the case. But since then, I have uh, been put on probation, and with with probation, I I of course have to check in monthly or week bi weekly, um, and random drug screens. And uh, as of this as, as of this time, I do not know of any any recommendations through them. But uh, if there is, I am more than willing to do whatever is necessary. If you were allowed to keep your parental rights and asked to continue to work services, would you be willing to go to an inpatient treatment center? Yes, I will. And did you also complete a psychosocial evaluation on July 20th of 2022? Yes, I did. And did you also complete a domestic violence support group with yes, family support services? Yes, I did. Now, do you think it's in your best interest and in your daughter's best interest for you to keep your parental rights? Yes. And why do you think that? Because even with my relapse, I have done anything and everything that has been asked of me, and I am still doing anything and everything I, I need to do to better myself, to be a better mother for my daughter, and to better myself and not have to rely on uh, others to take care of me or my daughter. I'll pass witness. Mr. Ron, let me just, I want to clarify. So she's on probation for that endangerment? Yes, ma'am. George? I want to make sure I heard that correctly. Yes, ma'am. When did you enter in? Did you plead on that or go to trial? Yes, I plead on that. Yes, ma'am. And when did you do that? Um, it was, it's been, I'm going to say probably right out about a month. Okay, and and is was it def, a deferred? Uh, no, ma'am. It was regular three years probation. All right, regular three years. Okay. So conviction was entered. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay, I just want to make sure we were. I was talking about one of the same things. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, any further questions right now, Mr. Honor? No, Your Honor. I'll pass the witness. All right. Mr. Hammonds, any questions? Yes, Judge. Ms. Wildey, there's been some mention of other children that you've had that your parental rights have been terminated. 
Do you have any contact with those kids? The only ones that I have any contact with are my grown children, my two oldest boys. And the, they are the only ones I have had any contact with. I do not have contact with them on a regular basis, though. Okay. But once they hit 18 as adults, they, you know, made a decision themselves to make contact with you. Yes, sir. And are they here locally? Uh, no, sir. They uh, both live in Louisville, okay. Texas. Uh, and how old are you right now? I am 44, sir. I have nothing further, Judge. All right, Ms. Zavala. You said the last time you used was a month or two ago, correct? Yes. Um, and then after sometime within this last month period, there were friends that were living with you that were used. Yes, ma'am. I mean, it's like I stay, stated that as soon as I did find out that they were using, I did ask them to leave and they have been removed from my home. They no longer okay. live there. Who were they? Um, just a couple of my friends. Okay. Was did that include Miss Fredeloso? No, it did not. Okay. So at the beginning of the case, um, your use exposed temperance, correct? Um, not mine per se. It was uh, either Rose or my husband Ronnie at the time. But I, I I was using at the time, but I never used in front of my daughter. But but your daughter was exposed, correct? Uh, that I if she was, it would have been while I was at work that I did not know at the time. And if I would have known at the time, I would have uh, removed them at, uh, from the home at that time. But am I correct that that's what you just pled to was endangerment for exposure to your daughter? Yes. Okay. So, so at that time, you had a positive drug test, your husband had a positive drug test, and, and Ms. Fredeloso was also living with you and using as well, correct? Uh, her use, I was not, I did not know. She did inform Ms. Braden that she, I was off that weekend, that she did go use. She did not use in my home. And I did not know that when she, when she took off that weekend, I did not know she went to use. When she informed Miss Braden of that, that was the first I knew of it. And with Ronnie, I did not know that he was also using because, as far as I know, he was not using in my in the home. Okay, I we've lost Dad. Uh, Judge, his phone was going dead, so he has come to my office and he is present with me in my office. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Sorry, yes. to interrupt. I realized he was not with us. Okay, so after you heard that Ms. Fredeloso had been using, she was in your home the very next day, correct? When On that, was um, she was asked to leave the day before. She did leave. She was unable to get all her belongings, and Ms. Braden did tell her that she would be able to come back and get the rest of her belongings. There was no time stated then when it would be okay for her to come back to get the rest of her belongings, and she did come in, and she went to the bathroom. She, did, she was not anywhere around my daughter. My daughter was in the playpen in another room and was not anywhere around Miss Feloso at that time. Okay, so 18 months later, um, you've got new and different friends, not Miss Feloso, that are living in your new and different place that are also using meth. Yes, and like I stated that I did not know that they were using when I allowed them to come into my home. And as soon as I knew and found out that they were using, I asked, I asked them to leave and they have been removed from the home. Okay. I, I think you had stated earlier that moving out to the country to your dad's house would, would be safer from, from exposure. But these yes. people were living in that country house in the trailer, right? Yes, ma'am. And like I've stated a couple times before, I did not know that they were using. And as soon as I did know, I asked them to leave and they, they did leave and have not returned to my home. And as far as I know, they have not, they were not using in my home. I just found out that they had been using. I do not know if it was in my home or other out other places. I do not know. But like I said, as soon as I found out, I asked them to leave. Okay. So I, I believe that Ms. Naranjo had asked you earlier about what you learned from uh, rehab. And you said you you learned some tools to avoid and stay away from, from drugs. What were those tools? That people, places, and things, um, how to redirect 
when, if I become overwhelmed or stressed or anything, how to redirect instead of going, using my, using drugs as a go-to and how to, you know, use NA meetings and other sources, calling a friend, uh, Amanda, when I did relapse, I, I let, I did call her and we, we spoke, I went to her home and she spoke with me and helped me, helped me through it and kept from that moment, she has helped me from using. Okay. So, so you learned these tools back in May, but then you used a month or two ago and then you've had people around. So, so have they been effective? On um, yes and no, I, on that, I'm, I'm not using it as an, a reason or an excuse. I take full responsibility on my relapse. I do feel very bad about that. It was because I was very overwhelmed with my other legal issues because I was not at that time. I did not know if I was going to be going back to prison or if I was what was going to be happening with that. And at that time, I also we also found out that uh, my husband has some additional health issues. And also my grandmother uh, found mm -hmm. out my 97 year old grandmother has cancer and may have to have it removed and may not make it through. You also said you learned some tools to get gainfully employed. My addiction is a daily struggle. I, I know this. I'm trying very hard to fix that issue. It will always be an issue in my life because I am, a, a, I am an addict and I am trying my hardest to get help with that. And I am, I, because of my health issues that I had to have surgery on my leg, I have not been able to uh, look for a job, but I have also still been uh, online on Indeed and other job sources looking for a job. I do have actually have a interview today at three o'clock at a, a wing stop. So I am, I am still trying very actively trying to find a job. So you talked about your health issues. When were you in the hospital? Um, I was there the 28th, 29th, the 30th. Um, I just got out of the hospital maybe, I believe it was two days ago. So, so you've been having these health issues for about two weeks? Um, prior to the surgery, yes. Um, I, my leg was swollen and really bad. And I didn't, at the time, I didn't know it was that big of an issue. I just thought, you know, I bumped my leg and, you know, possibility of pulled a muscle or something. Then I did go to the hospital and found out it was a blood clot. Okay. So the, how has your health over the last two weeks affected your ability to get a job over the last 18 months? Um, because I was um, also working with uh, my my ex, Aaron Turner, I was working with him uh, at a, uh, doing day labor kind of thing, just remodeling and things like that. Um, I no longer have contact with him. He, do, he does not, he is no longer living in my home. I have, have not spoken to him in a, a few days. Um, but I was working with him and I would do day labor periodically. Um, other than that, I was still looking on Indeed and other job sources. So was he one of the, the people that was living in your home that you didn't know was using and you had to get him to leave? Yes, he was one of them. Is he the, it was he your fiance who was in jail recently? That yes, you? it is. But we are no longer together. He uh, no longer lives in the home. And uh, I, will, I will not be having any contact with him. So as of a few days ago, he no longer lives in the home? Um, it has been a little over a week or so ago. When's the last time you lived with Ronald? Uh, it has been a while. Um, I, did, I did stay when I got out of treatment in Bastrop. I did stay one night because I, we did not have the means to make it all the way to my father's house, which is out in the country at that time. But I did the next day. My dad, my father did come and pick me up from his home and I have not lived with him since then. And when was it before that? Oh, uh, before that was when we were living in the home on Fairmont where uh, the, the incident, all this uh, came about. Can you tell me what temperance needs on a daily basis? He needs, of course, love and food and shelter 
and her basic needs and also to be able to learn and be taught the, you know what she needs to for her her level uh to just daily 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 things and to be able to have you know learning tools to you know and increase her her learning Do you have any idea what Temperance's diagnosis is? Um, I have been told that she may have. Uh, hold on, sorry. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, where she uh, has. Uh, I cannot remember the name of it. Darn it. Uh, but uh, yes, I have been informed of that, and then I've also been told that they are going to retest her. Because her the, where the level that they have put her on being autistic, I'm sorry, that that is it. Being autistic, they have noticed that she is on a lower level that she is not going to need as much care on the, on that part of that. Um, uh, and I have we did ask about uh, the classes to be able to learn how to properly care for her and for a, a child that is autistic. Just quickly, Ms. Archer, I haven't seen a case yet. Did you send that to Ms. Katie or to me? Oh, I was just afraid to minimize my screen while she was testifying. I have it ready to send if I can just have a moment. Yeah, right. if you will, please. Okay. Um, I believe you were saying that you participated in an OSAR? Yes. And after after your rehab, and, and I believe also at the time the OSAR was, was NA recommended? Um, I believe so, but I'm not for sure on that. Okay. And I, I think you identified that yourself as one of the tools you could use. Yes, that I learned in, uh, while I was in treatment. Yes. Uh, how many NA I, meetings have you been to in the last 18 months? And I've been to a few. I have not been to enough. I have not, I did not go on a daily basis and because of my, of course, my health issues and my transportation issues. I have not been able to do that on a daily basis. So tell me about your transportation issues. Um, I have, I do own my own vehicle. Um, the only thing is my vehicle is an older vehicle and it does require maintenance. And that in the fact with uh, me being, unfortunately being unemployed, uh, at times the, uh, the gas situation is another reason why I have not been able to go. But it's my mind. So if if the judge ordered temperance home with you today, what would what would her care look like? What would her care look like? She she has two rooms. One is a room for her to sleep and you know have her clothes and everything in one room. And then she does also have a playroom. Uh, she would have, of course, her basic needs, her food, her her shelter, and her clothes and everything like that. And uh, I would still be utilizing the daycare that she is attending as of now that I, as far as I know, um, where I can still use, be able to look for employment and where I won't have, that wouldn't be a hindrance at that, where I wouldn't be able to get a job. How would you get her back and forth to daycare? Uh, with that, I would be able to either me take her with my vehicle or my father does have a vehicle. Uh, the only thing with that is that he does take care of my 97 year old grandmother. So the only issue with that would be, I would have to get my 97 year old grandmother out and tow her along. And she, she uh, unfortunately does have uh, dementia real bad. So it is sometimes a, an ordeal to be able to get her in the vehicle and get her places without having issues. And how would you, pay for the clothes and the food and whatever she needed? Um, until I was able to ha get employment, um, I would utilize the churches and other services that there are here in Amarillo. And uh, my father also would help out. And uh, other than that, I'd, like I said, I would be still gainfully trying to look for employment. And uh, I would also look to her father for any kind of help that he could provide on that. Why would a job suddenly appear after 18 months? 
because I mean, I've been, like I said, I've been putting in for jobs. I've went to numerous uh, interviews. Um, I I don't know why I have not been able to get a job, but besides the fact that I was working with my ex on day labor jobs and remodeling and things like that, um, and that those jobs were providing enough uh, of an income to be able to provide for temperance at that time. That makes sense. All right. Um, I'm going to give Ms. Taylor a, a break while, while she's taking a break. Ms. Uh, Archer, you are also here today on our, what's, what's supposed to be at one o'clock, adversary hearings. So I'd like to just visit with you and Mr. Trout and Ms. Zavala real quickly about that. To, uh, it's a question of who, who I need to make weight, obviously. So I've got to, I will just tell you all I have uh, for those. So, so everybody else can take up, you all can take a quick break. Let me go ahead and talk to the attorneys on this other stuff. All right, Mr. Trout, you can continue. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Ms. Wildy, in your prior testimony that we've been through, um, since the beginning of the case, so in Ms. Zavala's questions, you um, have pled guilty to probation on the endangering child, correct? Yes, sir. And you state that it must have been somebody else's exposure, not yours, correct? That is not what I said, sir. You said you were never in the house or around temperance, so it either came never from your husband or somebody else that was in the house. I guess I was. I did not know if they were. I was not personally using in the home with methamphetamines. It does come out of your out of your pores and in your sweat. So even if I was not using in the home, if were with my use, yes, I could have, you know, contributed to that. But at the same time, uh, I do not know if. The other parties were using in the home or not. Okay. So you also stated that I believe at the time you weren't aware that your husband Ronald was using. Is that correct? I knew he was he was drinking, but I did not know that he was using. No, okay. I did not. And recently you stated that people living in your house you did not know were using. When I allowed them to come in and stay in my home, no, sir, I did not. And like I stated, I as soon as I found out that they have been using, and I do not know, as far as I know. If I find out that they used in my home, I, I'm going to be very upset. But as far as I know, they did not use in my home, but I did find out that they had been using. So I did ask them to leave and they have left the home. Okay. So from what we're seeing from the beginning of this case until now, you don't know who you are around and who uses. On that, sir, I did know them. I did not know that they were using. I did not know that they used methamphetamines. I did not know that. And that, like I stated numerous times before, I as soon as I found out, I asked them to leave and they have been removed from my home and they have not came back and they will not come back to my home because they're not welcome there if they're going to be doing that in my home or coming into my home. Okay, I, Jackson, I just okay, just listen carefully to what he's asked. Just the question. The point being, Ms. Wildy, is even including your husband and your friend you allowed in your house. You did not know whether anybody was using. You just allow them around you. Is that I, correct? With my husband, I, I lived with my husband. I did not. And like I stated with Rose, she did not use in my home. And I did not know that she had went out and did that. And as soon as I found out was when the investigator was there and, at, and asked her and she was removed from the home at that time. Uh, so so I mean, that's, was, that is correct. You don't know who you allow around your house or travel. No, that, that is yes and no on that, sir. I mean, as far as using. Uh, at that time, I did not know that they were using. And as soon as I knew that they were using, they were, were removed. Okay. And I may have misheard this a while ago, but when did your ex move out of your house? It has been about a week, a week and a half. Okay. You stated he was also one of the people using. Is that correct? Yes or no? I, I do not know that he was for a fact because I never saw him and I did not ask him uh, because of personal issues on that. Not with the drug use, but because of personal issues between me and him. Um, Objection beyond the scope, Your Honor. I'll sustain. Ms. Wilder, earlier Ms. Zavala asked you, was your ex one of the people using? And you stated yes. Is that yes, correct? I found out yeah. after the fact. Okay. Yes. Earlier, you testified fact, to my... Okay. okay, just... Ms. Wildy, just answer the question and then stop. And, okay. and it, it, you're talking over Mr. Trout. It makes it very difficult for the court reporter. Earlier, you testified to me, to my questions, 
that the people had moved out of the house about a month ago. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But if your ex just moved out a week ago, that is not correct that the people using were out of your house a month ago. Your ex was still in the house about a week ago and was using. I did not know he was using. He was using while he was at work. He has, as soon as I found out, he, he left too. I, he, yes, he left about a week ago, but I did not know that he was using. He was only using when, while he was at work. Throughout this case, were, did you drug screen regularly? Yes, I did. Were you made aware of results of drug screens? Some of them, yes. Okay. Um, are you, were you made aware of your hair follicle test throughout this case? Yes, sir. And I, right. Yes, sir. Were you aware that you have not had a clean hair follicle throughout the life of this case? Yes, sir. And I was also informed that they would be going by the levels of the of the hair follicles, the results on those hair follicles. And far as I have noticed, every one of the hair follicles has re been reduced in, in that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Do you think your hair follicle from when you weren't using at the beginning of the case till you were using a couple of months ago, do you think they went down or up? With the last, with my relapse, they would, yeah, there would be, uh, it would be in my hair. It would not be very high levels. No, sir. Were, did you refuse the drug screen in August? No, sir. I did not re refuse a drug screen. Uh, when I went in to go, uh, I cannot personally go to use the, the bathroom with somebody watching me. And that's what I informed them of. I did not say I would not take the test. I did not say anything like that. All I said is I cannot go while somebody was watching me. Did and since then I have redone that test. Did you test in August? Do what? I'm sorry. Did you test in August? I did a hair follicle in August. Yes. Okay. Do you know what the results were? Uh, I not right off the top of my head, sir. But uh, uh, were you told whether they were positive or negative? Um, I believe so. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did you test in September? September. Um, I do not month. believe. I do not believe it was in September, sir. Okay. Um, how, so drugs have been a large issue again throughout this case. How long should temperance have to wait for you to get clean and stay clean and quit being around people who are using? He shouldn't have to, sir. And with being around people, like I've stated numerous times, that as soon as I, if I find out that people have been using or were anywhere like that i have asked them to leave and not return and i have not had any contact with these people anymore and i am still actively trying to work on my addiction and it is a daily struggle with that sir i'm i i am trying my hardest i'm i mean i made a mistake and i know that it was a very big mistake and i take full responsibility on that and i mean i i can't justify my mistake but I have, I'm trying to get the help that I need for that. And with my le other legal issues and health issues, I haven't been able to fully put forth the effort that I need to for that. And I do apologize on that, but I have been trying Objection, to- Objection, Your Honor. We're beyond the scope at this point. Awesome. <clears throat> Ms. Wildy, you stated that you know people shouldn't be around temperance due to skin or clothes. Um, transference, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And that you've asked people to leave once you find out they're using. Yes. So that they're if not they around you and so that they won't be around temperance if she was ever come back home, correct? Yes, sir. What do I we do when that person's you? I'm sorry, sir? What do we do when that person is you? When they're using, if, if I find out that they've been using, if they are in my home. Not I'm, the question. I'm the sorry. The question I, is when you're the person using, what are we supposed to do with temperance? She's already tested positive for methamphetamines. Yes, sir. And, and you that, haven't quit using throughout this case. So what happens? Who who asked you to leave and not be around temperance when she you were been using? I honestly don't know how to answer that, sir. I mean, I did not have my daughter in my custody or my care at that time. And I do apologize for my my slip up and my mistake. And Ms. I understand Ms. and I would Ms. Wilby. 
That's not that's not answering his question. Listen to his question. I honestly, I do not know how to answer that, sir. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Archer. Here. Okay. Are you ready? To your, to your knowledge, did they test you for drugs when you were in the hospital this last week? No, not that I know of. I they, they, they have no reason to. But I can't hear. Can you, I can't hear. Uh, I I do not know if they did or not. Um, they really wouldn't have no reason to. As far as your job search that you've been asked about, what what do you? I, th I believe as Miss Savala asked you, what was different prior in the case to your job search now. Can you tell the court what might be different? That at the time I had pending legal issues and no one wanted to hire me with pending legal issues. Were they afraid that you might be sent off to prison? Yes. Do you plan on having any more house guests in your home or mm -hmm. have you learned that lesson? I am not going to allow anybody in my home other than me and my daughter. Excellent. Ms. Moronho? No other questions, Your Honor. Right, and Ms. Savola. I think just a few. Um, as to the drug screens, are you aware that on June 7th of 22, you tested positive for, at 16,865 for meth? Your Honor, I would object at this time to Ms. Savola's asking questions about things that have not been admitted into evidence yet. I believe Ms. Archer made an objection to those drug tests and until we get a ruling on that. And Your Honor, I, I haven't had a chance to read the whole thing, but if I read if I read the case correctly, and it was a quick scan, um, it appears that the objection to the affidavit for business records in the 2004 case that was cited, um, it appears to me like that did not include, it was a straight business records affidavit and did not include the chain of custody language that our particular affidavit includes. I believe that our affidavit is different from the one that was objected to in the 2004 case um, and is sufficient um, to be admissible today. May yeah, I respond? Sure, sure. I'll allow it. We'll just take the we'll just take the time right now to take this up, and then, then I'll real. I, I took the time to review the case when we were on break. That's partially what took me so long. Go ahead, Ms. Archer. In the business affidavit um, submitted as the possible exhibit two, I don't. It says the title of the person, but not their qualifications. It says the method of testing, but not if it's done in a normal testing procedure for that type of drug. Um, furthermore, in the case that I gave, um, it says that instead of the business record affidavit, that the parent is entitled to more of the procedure that is done in criminal type cases. Uh, the criminal, one of the criminal cases that's controlling would be Bull Cumming versus New Mexico, the Supreme Court case that says the actual testimony of the person who prepared the results um, is their testimony is required. Otherwise, it violates the defendant's Sixth Amendment rights under the Confrontation Clause. And I realize that's a criminal case, but uh, the case I cited here, the KCP. Um, does say that a termination case is more like the criminal case than a civil case. Your Honor, if I can add on to Ms. Archer, I believe the case also states it is uncontradicted that no evidence was presented regarding the qualifications of the persons who tested the specimens, the types of tests administered, or whether such tests were the standard for the particular substance. None of that information was included in any of the business record affidavit, and for those reasons, the court said that it's not admissible. Your Honor, I've, I've got another case I would like to send. Um, give me one second. Um, it's a fairly newer case. It is in memorandum, but it speaks of um, on this issue and what the affidavits need to say. Also, though, in the case that Ms. Archer sent, um, they ended up in that case allowing the drug screens in due to um, there was no harm for the admitteds because the person they were being admitted against testified to all of it. Ms. Weldy has testified to the first results through Ms. Braden were not objected to. Those came in. They're part of the drug screens. Ms. Weldy's also testified throughout her 
testimony that she used and she used in the beginning, used in the end, and she admitted that she has been notified throughout the case of what her screens were. So she's already admitted to the drug use, Your Honor, from the beginning up until the end of this case. Um, I mean, it's, <laughs> I believe that that shows the accuracy of the test because she's admitted to using throughout the, the case. I don't think the drug screens are going to cause any undue harm to her due to the fact she's already admitted to all of it. Your Honor, when the case started, uh, the child wasn't taken away because of her drug use. She's admitted to one relapse, and I believe I did object during the first uh, witness testimony. Hey, Harm is used for analysis on cases for an appeal, not here, as well as not only is the usage being contested, but also the information on the levels, which is also only something that had been provided in the drug screens, which Ms. Wilde has not testified to any levels. Um, Your Honor, this is a 2004 case. Um, again, I've taken just a tiny quick look at it, and if we need to have more time to look at it, but I do believe that the language of the affidavits that were they were reviewing in this case are different from the language in our particular affidavit. Um, I believe this court has ruled before multiple times that these uh, these drug screens can come in without um, someone interpreting what those numbers mean. That the numbers themselves can come in. The information that's written on the report. But there can't be any analysis by the by the caseworker um, as to that. Um, this case has negative treatment as recently as December 29 of 22. And I believe both the language of the affidavits is different. Um, and it's not. In your honor, what I just I just emailed a case over and I believe that case is that memorandum of opinion was written in response to some of the negative treatment from this case that Ms. Archer sent, which is uh, speaking on that. Um, I, think, I think another important distinction about this case was that that the I believe it was the mother um, was complaining that the, it, that the drug tests were not actually conducted by the entities that provided the records. There was some third party component in these drug tests versus who actually was custodian of records and who actually signed off on the after the business records. So I, I, I do find that there are a number of distinctions in uh, the situation in the case that Ms. Archer has presented um, and what has been presented to this court. Um, I, I don't know that the, as far as hearsay objection that Ms. Archer made, um, I'm, I'm gonna treat it as I always do is I'm going to allow the records to come in. They say what they say. Um, but, you know, uh, the department or St. Francis representatives certainly are not qualified experts to interpret any of that. So, um, but but the records themselves, uh, I'm going to allow to come in. Um, let's see, those that was, was that three and six? Uh, two and four. Two and four, I'm sorry. All right, exhibits two and four are going to be admitted um, just for the purpose of, you know, what they actually state, but um, there, there won't be any interpretation of that unless the department calls the appropriate witness for that. Um, Ms. Wilde, I think, I think you testified before that it's important if those numbers go down. Is that what you were saying before? Yes, I was told that they would be looking at the levels of the hair follicles and from, from how I've looked at them and I've just you know, read them from uh, that the levels have gone down on every one of them, every one of the hair follicles. And it, I was told that it wouldn't, it's not necessarily a pass or fail. It is the levels on the hair follicle test that they look at. And okay. So, so you've looked at the levels. Would you agree that the one from, from June 7th, 22 states that it was 16,865? Um, give me just one second and let me look. Um, and you said that was uh, June? June 7th of 22. Uh, what were you needing? Were you needing the levels of the uh, methamphetamine or the amphetamine or both? The methamphetamine. It is 16,865. And then um, 
the May nineteenth, May nineteenth of twenty three. And may I just have a running objection, Judge, on all the levels coming in? You may, and and I'm. What what is the objection? Hearsay. Hearsay. Okay. Um, same same ruling. I'm going to overrule that. Other than it's just we're just looking at what the document says. Nobody is interpreting. We're just looking at numbers. Yeah. Can you read to me what the level is for the methamphetamine? There is a amphetamine, but there is a, there is no levels. It is a negative screen on that for the hair. Oh, oh sorry about that, ma'am. Sorry. It is amphetamines, uh, methamphetamines positive, uh, 14, 14 uh, to 11. Okay, so in about a year, it went down 2,600? Uh, yes, ma'am, I believe so. Okay, and then can you read me what the number was from August 15th of 2030? Okay. That one, I have, I, this is the first time I have seen this one. Uh, it says 50,000, which, uh, like I said, this is the first time I ever saw this one. Uh, there was one test that was taken uh, that I had never received. Non -responsive. I'm just asking her to read the number. This thing. What was the number? Uh, it was 50,000, ma'am. I passed the witness. Yes, uh, Ms. Wildy, was that test in August about the time of your relapse? Yes, ma'am, it was. And you've already admitted to the court that you did have a relapse? Yes, ma'am, I did. I'll pass the witness. All right, and uh, Mr. Owen, how anything? No questions, Your Honor. Right. Mr. Hammonds. No questions, Judge. Okay, Mr. Trout, anything further of this witness? Nothing further of this witness, Your Honor. All right, then you can call your next witness. Your Honor, I call Melody Zuniga, uh, and she hopped into the hearing. She has not been sworn in, so she'll need to be sworn in. Were, you said you're a supervisor with the department, correct? Correct. Were you on call this weekend? This I was. Did you receive a call of Ms. Weldy in the hospital? I did. And why was an intake called in to CPS? The intake was called in um, because there was a positive drug test on admission for methamphetamine and she had reported she had a two-year-old that lived with her in her care. Okay. And was it found later after your, your investigation was open at an intake that she was actually referring to temperance, the child as part of this case? Yes. When I was um, doing some initial screening to determine if I was going to send a worker to respond, it was found that it was temperance she was referring to. Okay. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Okay, um, Ms. Archer. Didn't she state that she had a daughter but did not say that the daughter lived with her? The intake stated that there was a child, two-year-old child in her care. That's the information that I received on the intake, which is why I did some initial screening to find out if it was temperance she was actually referring to or not. Pass the witness. And Ms. Naranjo? No questions, Your Honor. All right, and uh, Mr. Hammonds. No questions, Judge. And Ms. Vaughn. No questions. All right. <clears throat> All right, you can call your next witness. I call Ronald Wildey, Your Honor. Mr. Wildey, did you work services throughout this case? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. Have you completed your BIP class? No, sir. And and why haven't you completed that? Because I was having to re redo it. And can you tell us why you were having to redo it? Because I had too many uh, absences. Okay. So in in eighteen months, you've had to you got too many absences from the BIP class and were expelled or kicked out, whatever language they use, and then had to restart. I haven't restarted yet. I started in the class in the end of January. I still haven't uh, completed it yet. Okay. So you said the end of January? Yes, sir. Okay. So now in 10 months, you have not completed that class? 
Uh, no, sir. Okay. And this case started due to an incident called in on a domestic violence issue. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So your main, the main issue for you, at least starting out on this, was domestic violence, and you have yet to take finish the class to help mitigate that. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Weldy, do you use methamphetamine? Yes, sir. When was the last time you used? Two days ago. Two days ago? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Weldy, do you think you're in a position to be able to take temperance and care for her at this time? Alone? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, do you believe it is in Tempest's best um, best interest to stay where she is right now? For the moment. Okay. Um, how long do you think she needs, you said in the moment, how long do you think she needs to wait? She shouldn't have to, it's not her fault. Um, do you want Tempest to have a good life? Yes, sir, I do. And raised in a safe home? Yes, sir, I do. Do you believe at this time you are, Ms. Weldy can provide that? I can't speak for her, but I know that, that uh, I can't, my, uh, my medical. <laughs> I'll pass the witness, Sharon. All right. Um, Mr. Hammonds. <clears throat> Thank you, Judge. Mr. Wildey, uh back in April or May, I mean, you were really making some good progress. Would you agree with me? Yes, sir. I was pretty much clean. You were clean. You were working. You had your own apartment. Sorry, for I don't know if you said two or ten. Ten months, Your Honor. Ten months clean in April or May. Um, did you run into some medical issues like this last summer that they've kind of set you back? Uh, yes, sir. They, uh, they had taken me off of one of my medications and it's kind of, it's thrown me off to where I'm having to go back to, to the hospital again at the VA and, uh, they're going to be sending me down to Big Springs. I'm going to do a 45 day inpatient treatment down there because my balance is off of whack right now. <clears throat> You've had a history of seizures, correct? No, sir. These seizures are come about from my uh, my HIV. Okay. I'm and so sorry. I, I am, can't hear him. Yeah. Today he's fading off. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get him a little closer, Judge, and just speak up a little bit. But uh, you are on some HIV medication. Yes, HIV. I still take one seizure med. I take a, a heart med for my a heart murmur. I take them for my blood pressure. Now the fixes are putting me on for my mental health. And how long have you been diagnosed and taken those types of meds? Since 2003. All right. <clears throat> now we've discussed over the last few months and even over the last week, at this moment, there is really no way you could possibly take care of a two-year-old toddler by yourself. No, sir. I mean, you're not working. You've got medical issues that you're having to take care of. It's just not possible. I agree. You have no other family or friends here in Amarillo that are really much of a support system, correct? In Amarillo, no. Where does the rest of your family live? They live here in Amarillo. They just don't have nothing to do with me. Okay. I have nothing further, Judge. All right. Um, Ms. Archer? Mr. Wildey, do you believe it's in Temperance's best interest to be allowed to see her mother? Yes. How would you describe my client's mothering ability? Shada has a very good heart. She's always willing to go out for the other person other than herself. She's not selfish. She's always... How do you say uh, that caring heart. Is she good with temperance? 
Yes, Tiffy's always smiling. Either you know, what I mean, uh, me or her. I don't think she really knows how to cry, so she's always uh, been a good daughter. Okay, you said Tiffy's been a good daughter. Has my client been a good mother? Yes. Do you have any examples of that that you can think of? I know that when I, oh, I went into the hospital right after Tippy was born, there was a picture taken of, uh, it was on the 4th of July, our, uh, our anniversary, and I could just see the, in her heart that, you know, that she, uh, she cares for, uh, for Tippy. It's just real hard for me right now because uh, of my medical stuff. My memory capacity is, isn't all there no more. I'm sick, so, I mean, I just. Is I know she patient? Started, is, yes, is she patient, patient with Timothy? Yes. yes. I'll pass the witness. Ms. Your Honor? No questions, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right. Um, Ms. Savella? Mr. Weldy, when is the last time you've seen Shauna with Timothy? Last year? No, Christmas. And then her birthday. So this past Christmas? Yeah, this past Christmas and her this past birthday. At a home visit. And can you tell me what Tempe's needs are? Right now, TV's got a, uh, they say a lot of needs. Uh, she has ASD, level two, and the spectrum disorder. I, I know that that's a, uh, they're not treated, that uh, she's going to need a lot of care with that. And do you believe that Shauna can provide that care that she needs right now? I, I can't answer that because, uh, we're really not, from, from what I know of uh, my wife, I know that she, that she could, but it, I haven't been around her you know, in, in a while, so I can't really speak you know, any things that I don't know about. I pass the witness. Mr. Crow? Just a few more questions, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Weldy, you stated that up until April or May, you were 10 months clean. Is, is that correct? Did I hear that right? Yes, sir. Okay. What happened? I mean, I know you had some medical issues and they messed some of your medicine got messed with. Um, what made you relapse during that time? After uh, after we went to the April 4th hearing, okay. I was I was fixing to get I was fixing to get chippy like on the weekends unsupervised because I was already having unsupervised visits. I just I just lost it. I mean, there's no excuse for what I did, you know. And uh, up until a little while ago, when they were talking about uh, maybe a possible open adoption. I was I was going downhill until they said that uh, to me. So ever since then, I've, I've been trying to to get back on track. That's why I was uh, so I'm going down to uh, Big Springs okay. in the few, next few days. And Mr. Weldy, since April or May when you relapsed, have you been using continuously since then? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you said you were trying to get back on track, but you've been using for the last five, six months up until two days ago. Is that correct? Yes, sir. More the uh, it's the alcohol is the methamphetamine is this stuff. That's not that's not my uh, drug of choice anymore. Okay. And you said alcohol. So are you using alcohol and methamphetamine right now? I have been. Okay. Now, a second ago, you said that with Miss Wildy, that she's not selfish and she's willing to go and do things for others. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Do you believe that's what she's done in this case? Not a hundred percent. I'll pass with you, John. 
All right, um, Mr. Hammonds. <clears throat> I have no other questions, Judge. All right, Ms. Archer. You mentioned that the last time you saw my client with Tempe was the Christmas visit and the birthday visit. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. But that was no through no fault of her own, correct? I mean, those are the times the department allowed you all to be together. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. For those special occasions? Yes, ma'am. And was that a happy time? Yes, it was. I'll pass it was like it was like old, it was like old times. I'll pass okay. it. Ms. Ronho, any further questions? No, Your Honor. Ms. Devola? No, Your Honor. Mr. Wilby, what is the status of your uh, case for the endangerment of a child? Is there, both of them are still pending tomorrow. Yours is still pending? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anybody have anything further for Mr. Willie? One quick question, Your Honor. You asked about the endangering. Uh, Mr. Wilde, do you still also have a pending uh, felony DWI? Yes, sir. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Trout, any further witnesses? I'll call Mr. Ray, Your Honor. And how are you familiar with that case? I have been the caseworker on the case since it, um, it first began. And when you first get a case, do you work up service plans? Yes, sir. That's correct. And what are service plans? Service plans are designed to help aid the parents in the process to gain reunification with their children. And what sort of things go into service plans? Um, drug classes, parenting classes, ensuring that they um, gain employment, housing, th things in that area. Um, were plans generated for this case? Yes, sir. That's correct. And were those plans uh, filed with the court? Yes, sir. And were they made in order of the court? Yes, sir. Did you receive what I sent out exhibit number one? Yes, sir. And what can you tell me what that is? It's the family plan. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ray. It was just one, correct? Yes, ma'am. Just one. It's, it's all one. Yeah, all, for all in one. Okay. Yes, sure. um, Mr. Ray. The parents did well on working services most of the way through this court case. Is that correct? Yes, sir. They did. And their certificates that we have have been filed with the court. Yes, sir. But there are services after 18 months that both parents still lack. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. And far so far, Ms. Wilby, can you tell me what services those are? Um, the primary services that Ms. Wilby still lacks is what we usually consider as the most important, which is her remaining clean um, as far as uh, testing and then having stable housing as well as stable employment. And those have not been demonstrated throughout the entirety of the case. And we, we heard testimony earlier and the drug screens were admitted, but Miss Wildy has not had a clean hair follicle throughout the life of this case. Is that correct? That is correct. And even after going into rehab, her levels went back up. Yes, sir. Um, do you know, is she, I believe she stated earlier, but do you know she's not working at this time? She is not working. The last time in which I spoke to Miss Willie, she was doing on and off odd jobs um, that she mentioned while we were in court, but she has, she was not able to provide any documentation or check stubs that entailed that these jobs were accurate or legal. Okay. Um, has she, at any point during this case, did she hold a steady job? I believe at one point she was working at Dollar Tree, in which I still did not get check stubs, but I, I was able to call and verify that she was working. Okay. Um, housing. Now, she testified earlier that she's been living in a trailer house, I believe, owned by her father um, for about three months. Were you aware of that? Yes, sir. I was aware of it, and I have been out there as well to view that home. Okay. You have? Yes, sir. When was that? That was in, I believe, in August, the beginning of August. Okay. Um, as to Mr. Wildy, what um, services has he? Now, he testified earlier that he has not completed BIP. Um, is that one of the main 
services we needed him to do in this case? Yes, sir, it was. And it was that due to the nature of the intake from this case that started with a domestic violence situation? Yes, sir, it was. Um, is part of his service plans also to remain clean? Yes, sir. So sober and drug free, I should say. Yes, sir, correct. And you just heard testimony that he has not done that for the last six months, five, six months. Yes, sir. Um, how is Temperance doing? Temperance is doing very well. She's in an adopted foster home. Um, they are working to meet all of her, her needs pertaining to the autism diagnosis. She attends ABA therapy in which that's an extensive type of therapy um, where the parents have to be involved. They come out into the home maybe six to eight hours sometimes a day. And she's been progressing tremendously. She's talking now. Um, she's verbalizing things more and actually using sentences. Okay. Um, is the placement that she's in right now, are they adoptive motivated? Yes, sir. Or I should say adoption motivated. I'm sorry, I think I misspoke. Yes, so, sir, yeah, they are. Um, have they have they gone through the process of um, licensing or anything yet? Are they still waiting? Yes, sir. Yeah, they, they are in the adoptive home. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, are you asking today for the court to terminate the parental rights of Shauna Weldy and Ronald Weldy um, based upon failure to complete services? Yes, sir. That is correct. The uh, D and E grounds of allowing her to be in dangerous situations. Yes, sir. Due to her testing positive at the beginning of the case. That yes, sir. And do you believe that that is in the best interest of the child? I do believe so. Do you believe it's in the best interest for Temperance to stay where she is and to be allowed to be adopted um, by the family that has her right now? Yes, sir, I do. And is that based upon the growth that you have seen from Temperance since she has been in that household? Yes, sir. Um, and I don't think I really got into this, but how have visitations with the parents, have those been going on or have those been stopped? Where are those? Um, visits stopped with Ronnie, I believe back in June, right around the time that he, he tested positive. And so we stopped visits with him and then visits just ended with Shauna. Um, I believe sometime last month we ended those due to her continuing to test positive. Um, and the child been in care for about 18 months. Yes, sir. And the department has provided the parents with opportunities and um, services to work in order to be reunited with their child. Yes, sir. And do you believe that at this time, either parent can provide a safe and stable um, home for the child? I do not. I'll pass away to Sharon. Mr. Ray, you said that my client did not have consistent employment or housing. Is that right? That is correct. Was part of the problem and her not having the consistency in those that she had to stop for rehab? That is not to my, my knowledge, no ma'am. But she did have to quit a job when she entered rehab, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and she did work at Dollar Tree, is that right? Correct. And did she work at Burger King? I was I was made aware by Shauna that she was employed by Burger King, but I never received anything validating that. So I, I cannot say whether or not she did. And then did she have a remodeling job? I am not sure. I'll pass the witness. Mr. Rondo? No questions, Your Honor. All right. And Mr. Hammonds? No questions, Judge. Ms. Bella. Mr. Ray, um, when when visits were still going on with mom, um, was Tempe having some some behaviors afterwards? Yes, ma'am. Following uh, visits, she had some behavioral issues, uh, not wanting to sleep, uh, not wanting to be changed, different things in that area. Uh, was she waking up with kind of night terrors? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Have those things gone away since the visits have stopped? Yes, ma'am. Supposedly they have. I passed away. Sure. Uh, Mr. Ray, can you clarify how the waking up at night and the behavior issue was due to anything my client did due to the visits? It is, it's not a valid that it was pertaining to directly to Shauna in the visits. It's, it's speculation. 
on past ones. All right. Anybody else have any questions for Mr. Ray? No judge. No questions. No question, yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Trout, any further witnesses? No further witnesses, not your honor state. We are the department of the rest of the time. All right. Okay, Ms. Archer? Yes, I'd like to call Amanda Haley. All right, Ms. Haley, you were previously sworn, so Ms. Archer, you may proceed. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Haley, how long have you known Shauna Wilde? Um, I've known her since 2021. And what is your relationship with her? I am a friend. Have you been able to see her around Tempe? Um... I know I, I've done it through video. I've seen it through videos, but she's always talking about Timby and how she wants to better herself as a mom. And that's, that's pretty much the logistics of it. Did you know that Miss Weldy has a drug problem? Yes, I do. Are you part of her support system? I sure am. And how do you, how do you support her? Um, I know she has a problem and I, I try to encourage and re I know the redirection and, you know, like I try to encourage her to go to rehab. When she went to rehab, I encouraged, I said, if you need somebody to talk to about things, she can call me. She's always welcome at my house anytime when she's struggling and I always try to encourage and maintain that, that just not a friendship bond, but a sisterly bond. Okay. Do you think that, and when I say Tempe, you know, I'm talking about temperance. Yes. Okay. Do you think that Tempe would be safe around Shauna Wilby? I do believe so. And okay. oh, go ahead. If, as long as she has her support system, and real friends and a real support system, I know she can be a amazing mom. And okay. I'm never gonna stop being that support system. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Ooh. All right, and um, Mr. Trout, any questions? No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Ramho, any questions? No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Hammonds? No questions, Judge. Ms. Zavala? No questions. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Haley, thank you very much. Uh, anybody have any objection to Ms. Haley being released at this time? No objection, Judge. No objection. No objection. All right, Ms. Zavala, uh, do you have a recommendation to make? I do, Your Honor. Um, it's my recommendation that the parental rights for both parents be terminated at this time. Um, I do believe that that's in Temperance's best interest. Um, it's been 18, 18 months, and um, I, I don't believe it's in Temperance's best interest to have to wait any longer. Um, I visited her in her home. She's doing amazing. The amount of work um, that's going into her treatment and her education and working with the autism diagnosis has made a world of difference for her. Um, you know, we say that kids thrive in, in a home a lot, but I, I'm, I'm pretty shocked at how much improvement she's, she's had um, over the time in care. Um, and I do believe that um, to be adopted in the home that she's in is, is in her best interest. All right. Thank you, Ms. Bo. All right, uh, I do find that uh, the department has made reasonable efforts to return the child home to the parents, but the continued drug usage, the failure to address the underlying domestic violence, the relapse, uh, lack of stability, um, all present ongoing and continuing dangers to the child. Uh, I find by clear and convincing evidence that it is in the best interest of the child to terminate the parental rights between the child and her mother, Shauna Wildey. Uh, based on Texas Family Code 161-001, subsection B1, the DELL 
O and P grounds and the best interest under B2. I likewise find by clear and convincing evidence it is in the best interest of the child to terminate the parental rights between the child and her father, Ronald Wildey, based on Texas Family Code Section 161001, subsection B1, the D, E, O, and P grounds, and the best interest of the child under Section 161001, subsection B2. At this time, I will name the department as permanent managing conservator, and I will continue the child's placement. Um, in order that there be no change in the child's current placement without an agreement or a court order. At this time, I'm going to dismiss all court-appointed attorneys uh, with the exception of the attorney and guardian ad litem um, after the de novo and time, excuse me, the de novo and appellate time frames expire. Um, Ms. Zavala obviously will remain in the case as the child's attorney and guardian ad litem. Counsel is always um, be mindful that your de novo does begin to run since I've rendered an open court today. And if you're instructed to file an appeal, uh, please do not file that notice of appeal until the final order has been signed and adopted by the referring court. Um, I am going to, I, I just want to address the parents uh, briefly. These cases are never easy and, and, and these decisions are not easy. Um, but I just cannot keep this little two-year-old girl waiting and waiting on you all to, you know, seriously, permanently deal with this drug problem and with the, the problems of stability and and uh you know temperance is a special needs child which means she needs a greater level of stability and a greater level of care and attention which you know takes resources it takes it takes you all having jobs it takes having reliable transportation to get her to and from appointments it takes you know, it, it takes a commitment beyond what most of us know as parents. And, you know, you, you folks are unfortunately not in a position to do that. And, and I can't keep her waiting on you to achieve that, you know, forever. The law is very clear. We are supposed to open and close these cases within 12 months. And for good reasons, we can extend that, you know, an additional six months, which we did in your case, because there was a point in time where you all were doing really well. Um, and, you know, and I had real hope that that we might be able to reunify the family. But, you know, we've just slipped back into the same old habits. And, uh, you know, I think I've been very honest with you all throughout the case about the fact that if if we're not drug free, I can't send the child home, particularly a special needs child. I mean, it just it just it can't happen. I would encourage both of you to look again at some sort of long-term rehabilitative treatment. Uh, particularly, you're not working. Uh, you don't have the responsibility of a child now. And, you know, there's no time like the present. So just because I've made this decision today doesn't mean that you can't turn your lives around. And I really hope that you will.